Hello everybody. Hold on, I gotta get my volume up. Hi everybody. Welcome fellow compassionistas. I know many of you know that I'm working on a book on animals in our language and in our everyday speech. And do you know there is an animal in that phrase, in that subject, in the video title, is an animal. Can you guess what it is? I'd be so impressed if you could guess what it is without looking. Hi everybody, Colleen Patrick Goudreau here with Michiko and Charlie. They're looking at me and being really cute, my cats. And I uh, just wanted to say hi and catch you up on a few things because last time we spoke, I was telling you how I was going to talk to some children at uh, preschool about veganism and I wanted to share that with you. I wanted to talk Halloween costumes because I want to hear about what you're being and I finalized, oh, excuse me, I finalized my Halloween costume. All right, there's Michiko, just being cute. Okay, hold on, seriously, seriously, I think she hears something. <laughs> Hi, Michiko. What's she doing? Yeah, she's stealing the show. She's stealing the show. There she is. Michi, I know what you're going to do. You're trying to jump over there. What are you doing? Come here. You want to sit on my lap? No? Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, that's, that's that. There she is. Okay, uh, distract, distraction. <laughs> I know, she's got a very soft, fluffy, furry, paunchy belly that swings from side to side when she walks. The cutest thing is actually watching her walk from behind and her belly just swings. <laughs> it's the case with a lot of female cats. Charlie's doesn't do that and Charlie eats more than Michiko eats. It's crazy, it's just crazy. So anyway, so I wanted to catch you up on um, that but now Michiko is just like stolen the show. Now we have to talk Michiko for a couple minutes. I have a black kitten in my lap right now, cute kitty, oh, precious. Wait, I wanted to share, there is another word that I, what was the word? Oh yeah, there is another word. Ah, love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So yeah, so I wanted to catch you up on that. I want to hear about what you plan on being for Halloween. And I, I don't want to tell you my costume yet because I'm still finalizing it. And maybe I'll just wait until you see pictures because I'm kind of excited about it. Um, and Janine said Kitty created technical difficulties for Mama. Not technical, it's just stole the show. No. Everyone got distracted, but it's a good thing to get distracted by, or it's a good, uh, it's a good excuse to be extracted, extracted, distracted. <laughs> um, so anyway, so hi everybody, where are you from? Where are you at? What are you doing? I'm excited. It's about to rain. The clouds are coming in. It's dark, it's cloudy, and it's still daylight, but the clouds are just surrounding me. So we're about to have a rainstorm which should last until tomorrow, which I'm very excited about. So always be happy when our California drought gets, uh, gets a little bit of a, a nudge with some rain. So we have some rain coming. And yeah, so what else can I say? Um, so the uh, event, well event, it wasn't an event. So the visit I had to the school last week to speak to 20 little six-year-olds, mind you, it gets even cuter than just like they were six year olds. It gets even cuter. It's a, it's a dual French English dual language school. So these little six year olds speak English and they speak French. <laughs> so it's pretty cute. And uh, I luckily got to speak English because I don't speak French, um, but it was adorable. Let me say hi to you guys. Um, hello, 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 Maria from Texas. Where are you guys? Why are you so quiet? Tell me where you're from. I've already told you where I'm from, Oakland, Did I, I didn't tell you that, but I'm in California, Oakland, and make sure you go to ColleenPatrickGoudreau.com because the website is final, it's really final, and I've gotten some great feedback from a couple of you, luckily not too many of you because I don't want too many things to be wrong with the website, so I had some suggestions, we need to reply and thank uh, it was Ruth in particular who gave us some really good suggestions, we've already implemented her suggestions. I think some of them, most of them. 
Um, so go to ColleenPatrickGoudreau.com. Check out the website. Let me know if you see anything. And certainly get your free jo Joyful Beacon Starter Guide there by joining the mailing list. And what else do we have here? So Erin said, okay, we've got Heather from State College, Pennsylvania, Gina from San Diego, Saskia from New Zealand. I love it. And what else? Erin said, we have a big party for all our friends every Halloween. This year's theme is witches, wizards, and familiars. All good vegan food and treats. I'm in Quebec. Erin, you're so brilliant. I love the idea of having a theme for the party. So we have a party every year for Halloween as well. My husband David's birthday is on the 27th. So his birthday, we always coincide. I always have a party that's for his birthday and for Halloween. And I usually, well, not usually, I make the costumes mandatory, but I don't do a theme. And I love your idea of a theme. I love it. I'm going to copy you and maybe do a theme next year. Uh, Barbara's in Napa and it's starting to rain here too. Yeah, I think the north is getting the rain before we are. So lucky you. And good evening from Chicago. Hello, Lisa. And Elle says, hello from San Antonio, Texas. I got to meet you at Austin Veg Fest a few years ago. I was the one who immediately started crying like a weirdo. <laughs> You're so cute. Which one? Which one? Because actually there were quite a few tears at that particular event. It was very sweet. I'm coming back to Texas. I was, I was really touched by the reception I got in Texas. So... Hi, Al. Good to see you again. Um, Nikki in Vermont. New Zealand here. Another in New Zealand. Nancy in Chicago. Carolyn in Chicago. Uh, Samantha in Brisbane. Lisa in uh, Tennessee. Yankee living in Tennessee. Sarah says, thanks for everything, Colleen. I'm from Australia and I love your recipes. Thank you, Sarah. Um, hello from Florida, says Bianca. Hello, Daniel from Tacoma, Washington. Good to see you, Daniel. Uh, Sophie watching from Belgium. Do you guys love how international this is? I love it. Chris says, thank you. Said the earth to the sky for the rain. Hello from the mountains of Tennessee. Wait, what is that? Why is that familiar, Chris? Why is that familiar? Is that a poem or a song or a movie or a line from a book or a movie please tell me actually the way you wrote that thank you said the earth to the sky for the rain that beautiful rhythm sorry you just like wrote poetry I just got distracted by the rhythm of your of your comment that was beautiful there is a song or something that reminds me of where thank you okay I'm gonna have to think about that I have a, I, yeah, okay, I'm going to just move on. Um, Colleen from Connecticut. Hi from Canada, says Amanda. Wilmington, Delaware, Bakersfield, California. Debbie, hello. My birthday is Halloween, but Australians don't really get into it so much. Yeah. It's a fun holiday. I love the fall, so it's just my favorite time to celebrate. And I'm very envious of my husband, whose birthday is on October 27th. I think it's the best time of year to have a birthday. And we usually travel this time of year, although this year, since we're going to Africa in December, we're not traveling in the fall, though we might take a weekend trip or two. We are going to L.A., but that doesn't count because we're down there a lot. But um, we usually go to London, and, like, this is my favorite time of year to be in, like, the U.K., uh, so maybe next year. And, yeah, so it's just my favorite time of year, so... I'm very excited. Um, Dallas is CJ, and happy birthday, by the way, Sarah. Happy early birthday, Stacy, upstate New York. Okay, we're going to move on. We're going to move on. Really good to see all of you. You're brilliant, Chris. You're a poet. You're a poet. Uh, Debbie, hello, hello, hello. Uh, Stacy said, I'm a kindergarten teacher and would love to hear how the talk went with the kids. And some advice. Uh, love to talk to my students, but it's, my, but it's tough because I don't want to push right my beliefs on them. Right, it's just... Yeah, that does sound, Natalie, that, yeah, is, what am I thinking? I need to, I need to go, I need to go look that up. I need to go look that up. Okay, thank you, thank you, Natalie. Uh, I'm going to go, I'm going to go look that up right now. Before I forget, I'm going to type this in, and medicine for the people. Okay. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to listen to that, because that totally reminds me of, Okay. Anyway, so, okay, well, uh, let me tell you about how the event, how, I keep saying event, it wasn't an event, how the visit to the children's school went. And what I did, I mean, you know, I didn't have time or didn't make the time to put a lot of time into it, but it was really fun sitting and kind of thinking about how I wanted to talk to the kids. And, you know, they're six-year-olds, so it was really hard for them to sit still for very long. Um, um, hi, Varsha. They, um, 
they really tried and they were, you know, reminded several times by the teachers and me to sit still, but it was really hard. And of course, someone said on the comments, you know, just be careful not to let them tell you too many stories. Because of course, what I did was in, in the story that I was telling, I also would ask them questions to raise their hand to keep them engaged. And of course, as soon as, you know, I said something like, so, so okay, so here's what I did. I told the story of a little girl who loved animals and who didn't know she was eating animals. And first I talked about all the ways this little girl loved animals and how that expressed itself in many ways in her life. So wearing clothes, you've heard me tell the story because this is my story, wearing clothes that had animal images on them, lunch boxes, reading books, playing games, singing songs, all about animals, uh, petting animals, having animals, you know, helping animals. And so with each part of that story, I would ask them when I talked about how I loved animals, or I've, this little girl, the story was about me, obviously, but it was a, I framed it as a story of this little girl who loved animals. And then I would ask them, who here loves animals? And they would raise their hand. You know, and I would talk about how I had a dog. And I would say, who here has a dog or a cat or a rabbit or has a friend who has a dog or cat or rabbit? And they would raise their hand. But of course, they'd want to tell me the names of the animals that they, they have in their homes and tell me all the... So we had to keep shushing them. But it was, you know, it was fun and cute and great. So I told it as a story that they could relate to as a little girl who loved animals but didn't know she was eating animals and and how her parents, you know, you know, they all thought she was a very compassionate, kind child. Who here is a compassionate, kind child? And they would raise their hand. But at the same time, she was eating animals. And so I really told my story from the perspective of a child, which is what I often tell it as because it was my story and it's the truth, and something they could really relate to. So, you know, we did that. And then I got to the part where... And so then I, you know, then this little girl grew as she was getting older. She found out about how the animals were treated and that, and, and she wasn't happy and it made her sad. And she, you know, I talked about a couple details about that and how the mamas want to keep their babies, but they're not allowed to have their babies because the people take their milk. And granted, just to give you a little framework and context, these, the, this class have, been, they've been talking about plant milks and animal milk, um, for the last week and veganism. So I, I don't think I came in, I mean, I probably told them some things they hadn't heard before, but they have been talking about this, so it wasn't brand new. And they were, you know, they were very receptive. And then of, of course they had some milks that the kids could try. So we had a little taste test and we had oat and hemp and rice, probably not my favorites, but they can't have any nut milks there because there's a child who has a nut allergy. The oat went over very well and I'm not surprised it did. And the children were just so cute and they were really excited about having the milks. And then I brought some snacks for them. Do I think I made new little vegans? No, I don't. I did my best and you know, it was, it's, it was lovely and it was charming and uh, you know, I'd love to do more of that. And, um, and you know, I have some things I would do differently because they really, it really is hard to keep them engaged being so young and being so excited. But, um, they, they, they seemed to get it and appreciate what I was saying. And I left there giving them the message to, you know, to love animals and not hurt them and to try new things and try new foods. We talked about eating by color. So we talked about eating plant foods and all the ways they can eat by color instead of getting their animal products. So, um, so yeah, it was cute. And like when I was leaving, they were like, oh, you're leaving? And will you come back? And I said, do you want me to come back? And they said, yes. And I was like, okay, I'll come back. So, um, you know, it's always nice when animals and children love you, it always feels good because <laughs> they can see right through you. Animals and, and children can see right through you. So when animals and children uh, want to be around you, it feels pretty good. So that was it. Uh, yeah, I don't, like I said, I don't pretend I made any new vegans that day, but um, I do believe in the immersion of information and repetition of information. So perhaps I'll go back and uh, and I don't think that's going to be a problem. And because this is a, um, a school that has other uh, schools in that same building, there's a charter school in that building and there are older kids and then there's another school, uh, you know, small classrooms, obviously. They 
voiced interest in having me come as well. And those kids are older. So there are opportunities, obviously. It's not something I want to make a habit of doing. Of course, if I really wanted to just go around and talk to schools, I could really do more of that. If I ever decide, and I've thought about it a lot, I, uh, if, I've, if I ever decided to go and talk to students, I'll be really honest with you, uh, I would I would rather talk to troubled youth. Uh, where I really want to put my energies is in really what I would call compassion immersion and reach out to to young people who have become desensitized to compassion or who haven't ever really connected to their compassion in a profound way and who have never really connected to animals. You know, I'm in Oakland here and obviously there is a huge urban population and a huge urban area and many of the people who live in this urban area of Oakland have never interacted with wildlife, who've, who've never been to the woods, who've never been to the forests uh, the, and the, the paths, the trails of Oakland and they're immense, but they've never had that opportunity. So to be frank, if I were to spend more time talking to students, I'd really like to talk to some older students and those who've had a troubled uh, past, those who've been disenfranchised for one reason or another. Um, I love talking to little peanuts. They're just adorable. And, um, and, I, and, I, and I love the idea of getting materials into these classrooms. I did donate Ruby Roth's book, Why We Don't Eat Animals, to the school. So that's hopefully a book they'll be able to read to them. Uh, in retrospect, perhaps I should have just read that book because maybe they would have been more engaged in terms of there being story um, you know, a linear, well, it's not very linear, but I mean, but with pictures. So, um, you know, lessons and gifts, that's what we all get. And yes, I believe some seeds were planted. Uh, so let's take a look at what you have to say here. Um, Sarah, thank you. Lisa says, awesome idea. Compassion immersion sounds, um, like a brilliant idea and so worthwhile. I think so, Sarah, I think so. And I hope so, Ranjini. I hope they'll be more curious. Uh, Saskia says, my five and seven-year-olds get veganism, and even if you planted a seed, they could go home and ask their parents more questions, which would be good. Indeed, indeed. Seeds, indeed, calf. Um, indeed. Absolutely. No doubt. No doubt. Um, Varsha said, there are a lot of kid videos that show they don't want to eat animals because it's a living thing. It's really cute to watch those videos. You're definitely bringing the awareness to these young kids. Kudos to you. Well, thank you. Kudos to my friend Sabine and to the school, uh, who invited me there. I was, you know, happy to go, even though I really was stressed out about it, <laughs> which I really don't get stressed out about those things, but you know, I'm a perfectionist and if I don't prepare for something and I don't feel really well prepared, I get stressed. So... Uh, so yeah, I was a little stressed, um, but it went over really well. And one of the teacher's daughters had just become vegan and an animal advocate. And she really wants to go to volunteer for animal, um, rehabilitation and rescue in Costa Rica. So I was giving her some suggestions about, uh, about that. So, you know, seeds were planted with the pair, with the uh, adults who were there as well. Seeds were definitely planted with the, with the adults who were there. So We'll see. I, I have no idea. As I always say, I planted the seeds and I have no idea how they'll germinate. But it also gives me clarity on where I do want to spend my time. I do, I, I really imagine the next couple years are going to be completely focused on this book and the marketing for the book, the writing of the book. The, I mean, it's going to take a couple years between writing the book and it getting out into the world and then the marketing and the, and the PR for it. I'm super excited about it and I really see that being the direction of my work. But part and parcel of that is uh, I'm really ready to get out there and speak to more uh, students and to more schools and organizations. And like I said, going into you know, treatment centers or um, detention centers and juvenile halls and that kind of thing. And I say that, I don't mean to sound lofty about that, I do, but I really do feel that there's real value and these are people who would otherwise get completely lost in the shuffle. And I, uh, my heart always goes out to the underdog. It's one of the reasons I'm vegan <laughs> because I, I cannot stand to see vulnerable beings suffer. And when I see disenfranchised people, youth, groups, or, you know, what, wh whomever, individuals uh, not have had opportunities because 
for one reason or another they were disenfranchised, be it because of race, be it because of poverty, be it because of just not having role models in their life. And I know how valuable it is to have really ugh, just to have a role model in your life, just someone who says something that no one else had ever said before to you. Um, to just really spark something in you. I really feel strongly about that. So I, I can see that being a direction that I go in as well. And that includes also giving them school skills for cooking and nutrition because that's obviously something they need as well because disenfranchisement also refers to access um, to information and food. Uh, healthy health information and food itself about you know information about what makes you healthy and where to get healthy food and where healthy foods come from and access to that food so Sarah how can you peacefully restrain yourself from the constant attacks about this way of life very annoying sometimes says Sarah sometimes someone uh, one needs to water those seeds until maturity indeed 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 Pat and thank you Diane um, so Sarah, to answer your question, yeah, I like Diane's answer, meditate, it really helps stay in calm, present, and in your truth, I think that's a great idea, I'm going to come back to you, Sarah, and Stacy says, I love teaching, but the food we share, serve the kids really bothers me, that I think at some point the job may not align with my beliefs, but it's hard to think of what career path, any vegan job friendly, uh, vegan friendly ideas. Um, people always say to me to open a vegan daycare, it seems good, but overwhelming, I know it's a hard question. Well, I don't know if you've listened to the podcast episode, um, Stacy, that I did on vegan in the workplace and it's more than just um, how to deal with coworkers. It's also about how to create a career that's aligned and in reflection of your values. And that doesn't always mean creating a vegan job. It doesn't always mean becoming a vegan chef or uh, working at a vegan company or um, even opening a vegan daycare. I think once we realize that our ministry, our audience, our um, you know potential garden is everyone we meet all around us all the time. So yeah, it's an imperfect world and I imagine that being in the environment you're in where you don't have a say about everything that happens, like the food, is frustrating because each and every aspect of your world isn't a reflection of who you are, but it's an opportunity, I think, to be able to plant those seeds and be able to make a difference. Now, that doesn't mean you have to stay in that job if you're not happy. I'm not saying that. But it doesn't always mean that our calling is somewhere where it's really safe for us to just feel protected. Uh, it might also mean that we have to put ourselves in situations where we're called to be the beacon of light and we're called to be that seed uh, because if we're not there, then who else would be? So that's just a, it's just a seed <laughs> I'm planting in you. Uh, but I do rec uh, I recommend listening to that podcast episode because there's a, a lot more to say about that. Um, Ella, or L, I need, I wish the font were bigger. This font is so small for me right now. I wish the font, I'm moving it closer. Um, Elle says, Sarah's question reminds me of your Hunter episode, the way you just stayed open and gave positive energy to the presence of people hunting. I think about how strong you were when I deal with negative people. Um, yeah, Sarah's question about, um, about dealing with all of the sadness. I'm backing up a little bit. Um, that's what you're talking about, Elle. Hold on, I just want to see what Pat says. When I worked for the feds, I left lots of vegan material and later heard from an executive that the literature made him recommit to veganism. Exactly, I love that. I love that. So yeah, Elle, exactly. Um, I don't get bothered. I mean, you know, if someone says something stupid about veganism and animal, like whatever. I mean, for me, it's so fleeting and it's such a reflection of them more, more than it becomes something that I absorb that it doesn't get to me. I mean, it really doesn't. If I were pummeled with it all the time, I could imagine it gets to me. But I have said a number of times, and as I said in the beginning of this broadcast, I believe in immersion and repetition. So I will repeat, uh, I do very much live in hope. And I dwell in hope and I choose to look at the hope. If I didn't, I would be a puddle. If I didn't, I would feel hopeless all the time. What I do also do is always ask myself the question, am I giving enough? Am I, am I being compassionate enough? Am I living up to my potential? Am I living up to who I want to be, right? I mean, I talked about this. I'm 
kind of all over the place recommending all these different things, but I talked about this in the, uh, the NPR editorial I did when I was talking about my relationship with my mother, that there was a time when I said, this is not about what kind of mother she is, because she's never going to live up to what I had hoped she would be as a mother. It's about what kind of daughter to, do I want to be. And it's the same thing in every aspect of my life. What kind of friend do I want to be? What kind of wife do I want to be? What kind of caregiver do I want to be? What kind of advocate do I want to be? So in the end, it's not about what anybody says or how they say it or how many times they say it or how annoying it is. It's about who I want to be as an advocate and that's the true test, how you deal with the constant barragement of annoying comments. <laughs> so um, not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but for me, my test, my uh, you know, my quest is to, is to be the best advocate I can be and recognize when I fall short so I can do better next time and recognize when I did well so I can repeat that next time. Again, lessons and gifts, that's all we get. Daniel, I speak to a lot of my patients at the hospital as their nurse when they ask me questions related to their disease process and things that can help them and be healthy if we only surrounded ourselves with vegan people, exactly. We wouldn't be spreading compassion and knowledge to those who aren't. I only learned about veganism myself when my friend posted on his Facebook page. Exa exactly. You got a little cut off there. There's something a little wonky with the way I, with the content there. But um, exactly, exactly, Daniel. And again, that doesn't mean that, and I said this, I think, in the podcast episode, that doesn't mean that if you are unhappy in a job and it's really not feeding you but depleting you, that you should stay. I'm not saying that. But I think we have to recognize that, you know, if this is our calling and, and, and we can rise to it, you know, there might also be an, uh, there might also be scenarios in our lives and in our work where we need to step out for a little bit. But that doesn't mean we have to step out of it permanently. So perhaps we want to step out of it for a time, replenish ourselves, and then step back in. That's always an option as well. Or that can be an option as well. Uh, Stacy says, okay, thank you. That helps a lot. I'll listen to that one again. I've been thinking of doing a nutrition unit with them and teach them about foods they haven't heard of and touching on compassion towards animals. Happy to uh, know that I have a little vegetarian boy in my class. Uh, so he sort of gets it from his parents. Really cute at lunch. He said to me, oh, it gets cut off. Something's really wonky with the way the person's name and the rest of the message is coming in. Let me, let me see if that gets better. No, it's not getting better. Anyway, it sounds like you, that sounds great. <laughs> and, um, you know, yeah, I mean, even in your workplace, you know, you could offer, you know, maybe, maybe you have just like an after workplace little cooking demo that you're going to do. You know, maybe people have asked enough questions about what you're eating at lunchtime or the students or the parents or the teachers, other teachers or your supervisors have asked. And maybe you'll just, you know, create some kind of ad hoc, like we're going to have a, like a really fun after work party. I'm going to do a little cooking demo. I mean, there's so many different ways you can, you can plant those seeds um, and do it in a really fun way. I do believe that food is such a great way to engage people around this. Obviously that's how I started. And, um, and I think it's a really, uh, sensual way because they're getting to eat really good food. They get to see, you know, they get to see it being made. And I think it's really effective. Um, is everyone here vegetarian? And I said, nobody, but I'm vegan. And I told him, oh, so, so, okay, you're continuing the story. And I said, no, but I'm vegan. And I told him what it's about. And he smiled. That's adorable. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. This got a little better. Wait, oh, wait. If I do that, that's better. Sarah said, I had the most amazing experience at a music camp in Indonesia. Got back today. Welcome back. And the first phrase I learned was Sayur Saha. Did I say that correctly? Or is it Saja? It's probably Saha. Vegetables only. And they were so, they were much more respectful and interested in one secret vegan. Came out of the woodwork. It was really nice. That's awesome. I love that. I love that. I love it. I love it. Okay, moving on. Anybody have any cool like uh, Halloween costumes you're going to be? Because um, I've already settled on mine and I'm really excited about it. Exactly on it. It could be just as simple as taking muffins to work. Anybody being any kind of vegan related or animal related costume for Halloween? We can talk more about this another day too. I am probably going to practice a cake tomorrow for my husband's birthday for the party. 
I'm sure he's not watching this, but I'm going to make a bourbon chocolate cake. Yeah, because it's chocolate and bourbon. Oh, I heard a sound. I thought it was a deer, but it was a person. Um, Sarah says, I raised my child vegan from birth, who is now a 19-year-old student at UC Berkeley, where it was, it's so easy to continue the vegan lifestyle, many opportunities for animal advocacy. That's for sure. Stacey, you're going to be a unicorn. That's adorable. Oh my God, Delphina, that is ridiculous. Are you being the three little pigs? Like you're going to be one pig here and one pig here and one pig here, or are you going with your family to be the three little pigs? That's ridiculously cute. Curious about your costume. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait and show you. It's not like amazing. I'm not that creative, but, um, but I'm kind of excited about it. I also like being really comfortable on Halloween. I also don't like being like uncomfortable, like I can't sit. And since... We we're kind of doing a double Halloween this year because we've got the party on Saturday night and then we've got actually Halloween on Monday night. I want to be able to wear the costume twice. So um, three of us. That's so adorable, Delphina. You were three blind mice last year. Do you know, also in relation to my animal language book, that three blind mice has another verse, another verse or two that's actually positive for the mice? Because in the very beginning of three blind mice it doesn't go very well for the mice, right? Three blind mice, three blind mice, see how they run, see how they run, ran up the clock, something. And then, like, doesn't, like, the farmer's wife chase them with a cleaver or something? <laughs> um, but it actually turns out well for them. Go look at all of the verses of three blind mice. You might be surprised. Um, sign me up for that. Amanda, you weren't supposed to hear. I don't like telling people what things are going to be. But, yeah, I'm going to make a chocolate bourbon cake. David loves bourbon. Actually, there's his bourbon right there. <laughs> you can see it behind me. Uh, and uh, it's chocolate and bourbon. Uh, and I will say that Amanda, who is right here, who's a good friend on this, on this broadcast, Amanda and Devin, her husband, last year won the costume prize, even though there wasn't a prize. Sorry. I didn't give you a prize. They were Charlie and Michko. Amanda, you need to put your picture up on my Facebook page so I can show everybody and they basically matched the markings of Charlie and Michko. I am still amazed. I never even asked you, Amanda, did you make those costumes? Obviously you didn't buy them in a store. Someone made them, obviously. Did you make them? Because I'm impressed. I'm like even more impressed. I don't know, I don't know why it took me a year to ask you that, <laughs> but I'm, yeah, I'm impressed. Delphina said, we had sweatpants and long sleeve shirts, most comfy costume ever. Yeah, that sounds really, com that sounds really comfortable. I am so impressed. When you say we made them, Amanda, could you be more specific? When you say we, be specific. Because I say we a lot in my coupledom with David, but most of the time it's singular. Either when I say... Hi, can we do the dishes later? That might mean, David, can you do the dishes later? Hey, can we drop by this store I need to go to? That might mean, like, you know, can you do that? Um, so when you say we, is it singular? I'm impressed. Wow, I'm impressed, yeah. You know that's never going to happen in this house. Neither David nor I have the patience nor the skills to sew or pattern things out. So yeah, David's still working on his costume, or he's still working on thinking about it. I try to nail him down, and then he goes off into these tangents, these ideas that are just unrealistic, and I have to reel him back in. Did I just do a fishing rod? I did. Maybe it's time to go. Okay, it's time to go. I need to go get some dinner, and um, I'm glad we got to talk. I hope those ideas and suggestions were helpful for you. Oh, that's a good point, Amanda. Yeah, that's a good point. He is an artist. Yeah, that's cool. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. You got to top that now, though, because, you know, I don't know how you're going to top Charlie and Michiko. <laughs> and you can't do Simon and Schuster, so that's not going to count. Uh, so thanks, everybody. Again, go to ColleenPatrickGoudreau.com. Let me know what you think about the website. And I look forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. I want to hear all about your costumes. And uh, I'm going to go do a rain dance, not to make it rain, but to dance the joyful dance of, oh my God, it's going to rain and it's going to rain tomorrow. I'm looking at my, my weather app right now and it's going to rain. It's going to rain tomorrow. What was awesome is that like I ran, 
I was able to like do my five mile run today and then it started raining. And then tomorrow it's gonna be raining and then I can do my run. So I really appreciate that the rain is in sync with my running schedule. Um, good night, Aaron. Good night, Stacy. Good night, Megan. You're welcome. Stacy, good to talk to you. And Pat says, if you're in a job of alignment with values, you use your money to support your values. Exactly. I say that also, Pat, in that podcast episode. Indeed, exactly. Perfect. Okay, adio. Ciao, everybody. I will see you hopefully tomorrow. Bye.